This webinar is a part of the Cycle of Freedom series and it's additional remarks from a business leader. We've introduced Henning Webb Prentice Jr., president of Armstrong Cork Company that is now known as Armstrong Flooring. In the 1940s, he was giving a speech on the industrial management and republic and he included these remarks that we call the Cycle of Freedom. As I've mentioned in another webinar, the additional insights that he had in that speech were remarkable and we're going to take a look at excerpts from his speech now and consider them for today. Paradoxically enough, he says, the release of initiative and enterprise made possible by popular self-government ultimately generates disintegrating forces from within. Again and again, after freedom has brought opportunity in some degree of plenty, the competent become selfish, luxury-loving, and complacent. The incompetent and the unfortunate grow envious and covetous. And all three groups turn aside from the hard road of freedom to worship the golden calf of economic security. The historical cycle seems to be from bondage to spiritual faith to courage to liberty to abundance to selfishness to apathy to dependency and from dependency back to bondage once more. At the stage between apathy and dependency, men always turn in fear to economic and political panaceas. New conditions, it is claimed, require new remedies. Under such circumstances, the competent citizen is certainly not a fool if he insists upon using the compass of history when forced to sail uncharted seas. Usually so-called new remedies are not new at all. Compulsory planned economies, for example, were tried by the Chinese some three millenniums ago and by the Romans in the early centuries of the Christian era. It was applied in Germany, Italy, and Russia long before the present war broke out. Yet it is being seriously advocated today as a solution for our economic problems in the United States. Its proponents confidently assert that government can successfully plan and control all major business activity in the nation and still not interfere with our political freedom and our hard-won civil and religious liberties. The lessons of history all point in exactly the reverse direction. Wow, as you've listened to these things, you probably think he's speaking to us today. Well, let's apply some of them very specifically, because I know you're already thinking these thoughts. The competent become selfish, luxury-loving, and complacent. Well, today, corporate cronyism is rampant with companies seeking favors, preferential treatment, advocating for policies that are in their best interest but not the country's, even selling national security. He also said the incompetent and the unfortunate grow envious and covetous. Well, today, the government stokes this. Class warfare, covetousness, racial tensions. Princess also said this. New conditions, it is claimed, require new remedies. Today, this is exactly the case. Never let a crisis go to waste. And at every turn, the advocated solution is more and more government planning and control. Usually these new remedies are not new at all. Utopianism, central planning, they have all been tried before. And Prentice's words echo through time for us today. The competent citizen is certainly not a fool if he insists upon using the compass of history when forced to sail uncharted seas. The lessons of history all point in exactly the reverse direction. Hey, this is something to really think about. And if you're in the workplace and a workforce leader, think of what Henning Webb Prentice Jr. has done here as an example for us all. To speak courageously, to take on cultural issues, and speak the truth and love to those that are around you. This is U.S. Civics Training. Thanks for listening.